So as a hunter, you spend a lot of time out talking to people, dead end leads, and then when you do find somebody that you connect with, usually it's not, hey, here's my product, sign the contract, let's be done with it. You've got to go back, you've got to work it, you've got to explain your product, you've got to go back again, and then finally you close the deal. You have to build that relationship. So as a hunter, it can be very, very time consuming. Now the next type of business that I'd like to talk about is what I call a trapper. Now a trapper is usually a brick and mortar type store. Somebody would walk into your business, they want to purchase a product. The problem with the trapper is it's really inconsistent. Location is really, really important, depends on where you're at. Then you get the people in the store, you got to hope that they really are, are there for your product. What if they walk in and what you're selling is really not what they wanted, they just thought you sold that. So overhead gets very expensive, advertising costs gets very expensive, marketing is expensive, you got to hire employees to be in the office or in the building to run it every day for you. So being a trapper is very consistent and can become very, very expensive. So now what I want you to do, before I get into this third type of business, and this is the business that is really going to make your sales go through the roof. But we need to shift our thoughts, and, and you guys got to promise me one thing that what I tell you here, you're not going to repeat to your clients because they're going to probably get mad at you if you do, okay? But I want you to think like a rancher, okay? You, you're, you're a rancher, you're ready, you know, you got rid of your last herd of cattle, and now you're ready to go get some more cattle. So what do you do as a rancher? You head down to the local livestock, you purchase 100 head of cattle, you bring them back, you put them out in your pasture, you put some hay there or grain there, whatever your cattle eat, and they hang out. That's what happens with most businesses. They go out and they spend a bunch of money to get cattle, okay, because we're going to call your customers cattle. That's why I say, don't go tell your customers, hey, man, you got a bunch of cows, we're going to, and don't tell them I said that, because then they're really mad at me and they never want to talk to me. But, but that's what happens is that you go out, you spend all this money to get your customer into your business, to get tied in with you. You sit them in your backyard, you give them a little bit of whatever they need, you know, so the cattle, they've got their grain, they've got their hay, they can graze, they can do their thing. But what happens on the, on the cattle ranch is that sooner or later, the cattle start to move a little farther away from the ranch. A little farther out, three months later, they're a little farther out, and before you know it, you look out there and there aren't any cattle in the field. So what does the rancher do? He goes to the livestock auction and buys more cows, right? No, that's not what he does. But that's what we do as business owners. Most business owners will spend all this money to get their clients to come in, to do business with them, fluff them up, make them feel real good, and then let them go. And then when they are gone and you don't see them anymore, you go out and you spend a bunch of money on marketing, a bunch of money on advertising, and you get all these new clients in. And you do the same thing to them. They come in, they're your client, they move on, and then you go out and you spend a bunch of money trying to get new clients. But a cattle rancher knows better than that. So what he'll do is he'll set up, he goes out, gets his posse together, gathers all the, ca the cattle, brings them back to the ranch. Starts to take care of them again. So let me ask you, how many of you in this audience today have been in contact with your clients in the last month? In the last three months? The last four months? six months, okay? You should be raising your hand and you should be in touch with your clients at least on a quarterly basis. Why is this? You spent all this money to get these people in here to do business with you, and then you let them go. And they forget about you just like you forgot about them. And then what happens? They see somebody else that's got a product or service. Well, you know what? Let me try this guy's service because suddenly, Maybe his is better than the other guy that hasn't talked to me for six months or for a year. Now, I'll give you a perfect example of how this works. Anybody in here familiar with lawn cone makeup? Yeah. I knew you were. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't wear lawn cone, but obviously my wife does. You see how excited she got when I said lawn cone? They've got this system down to a science. See, they know before she knows that she's running out of makeup. Because we get this little card in the mail that says, hey, it's lawn cone free gift card. I don't know about you, but me, free means it's not going to cost me any money. However, the free gift is only when you spend $50. But I can tell you it is a ritual every two months 
it's line cone time, honey. Um, you mind going to Falcon Lindsay and stop there? I'm like, I was really trying to go to Forks and Millie. You know, it's free gift time at, at Fal uh, Falcon Lindsay for line cone. I've got more line cone bags in the house than you can shake and stick out. I'm hoping they'll start giving away a computer bag because I need one. But they do that. They, they spent the money on advertising. They spent the money to get her in there to be a customer, to be a client. And then what do they do? They stay in contact with her. So how are you going to do this with your clients? Start a monthly newsletter. Start a quarterly newsletter. Start a semi-annual newsletter. Whatever it takes, do something to let these people know you care about. Give them some information on new products and services that you offer. Just give them information about your industry in general. There's usually constantly things that are changing over and over in our industry that our clients could use that information. And here's another perfect example of how when you don't stay in touch with your co customers, how are you gonna lose them? My grandparents have been with an insurance company for probably 50 years. I'm not gonna say their name, but they're supposed to be on your side. I can tell you they weren't on my grandparents' <laughs> side. But they watch the TV and they watch it over and over and they see this new commercial that says, 21st century, we give you all this that the people that are supposed to be on your side give you, and we give it to you for half price. So I walk out of the living room, my grandpa says, man, you seen this commercial for 21st century, Chris? I'm like, yeah, I've seen it. Why don't you give him a call? My policy's up for renewal. That's all it took. I said,